So a little bit about Footprints. Um, it is truly one of the first fully integrated IT service and asset management solutions. And you may be saying, well, there's lots of products out there that can integrate with asset management. But the level of how we do this uh, and to the depth that we can take this, and most importantly, the ease of integration that we can offer is superior to really anyone within, again, that mid-market space today. And we're going to talk to some of this as we're going through. The Footprints family is designed to truly do IT operations management, so not just IT service management, but again, that IT endpoint management as well, giving you a single pane of glass view to understand where your problem areas may be in terms of training that's needed, uh, those popular users that every organization has, and also where your problem devices are, where it may just make more sense to replace versus repair at this point. And of course, we want to help you get to fast time to uh, recognition of your investment in these solutions by making them very quick to implement, uh, again, and seeing that, that return very, very quickly. So one of the key things to keep in mind is that the Footprint solution, again, is not just service management. There is an entire side of the Footprint's product line, which is known as the Asset Core, which will really enhance this and take that to the next level, allowing for you to do things like automated inventory management with full financial asset management, software deployment, operating system deployment, patch management, etc. Beyond the typical needs within IT service management for incident management problems, knowledge management, service level fulfillment, uh, request fulfillment, et cetera. So if we talk a little bit more about the service management, again, I did just want to mention since a lot of what we're focusing on is IT service management, that footprint has been verified by Pink Elephant to meet the following 10, oh, actually I don't have them displayed here, but I'm going to list them for you, the following 10 ITIL processes, which include incident, problem, and change management, service catalog, request fulfillment, knowledge management, service, le service level management, and uh, service catalog. So again, being able to uh, satisfy all of those needs, and this has been a key piece to the Footprints family for a very long time. We've been receiving our pink verification since about our version 7 release back in 2005. Keep in mind, though, that beyond that, we uh, do offer what we call multiple business process automation. We're going to talk in depth about what that means in just a moment, and we're going to look at a few examples as we're going through the demonstration. We also, of course, do have a full-service catalog. Key element, as Dick was mentioning, an area that organizations are moving more and more to, to standardize on that and help customers understand what's available, and also to help, from a consumerization of IT standpoint, help customers understand that truly applications that you're asking for in an enterprise do not cost 99 cents and they are not delivered to you on the fly. So setting the right level of expectations and understanding about what it means when someone asks for a service from within the organization there. In addition, we of course have multiple means of getting all this critical data back out of the system that we're entering, and we will be looking at some of our executive level KPI dashboards as well as, as, well as discussing standardized reporting. So this idea of multiple business process automation, what does this even mean? Well, this is a fancy way of us saying that we can deal with multiple types of tickets. So really any type of ticket that you may want to be tracking, you can accomplish within footprints. And again, this is an area within the solution that we have found that we are very different within the competitive landscape, again, within this mid-market space that we're um, focusing on today. And the way that we do this is, part, is leveraging a core part of our architecture, which is known as a workspace. And we're going to use this term a lot as we go through today. And a workspace is simply a separate sub-database within the system but each of these can have their own custom fields, business rules, workflow, email address, customers, and even agents. So it will allow for you to completely tailor each of these different workspaces around the different business process that you may need to automate. We want to make this even easier for you in that we're going to provide you with about 15 to 20 different templates out of the box that you can use to get started as you create these different workspaces. Now again, there's no limit to the number of these that you can create, and there's no cost to add them. So sky's the limit in terms of how you may want to leverage this workspace architecture. Again, we have some customers in the educational market that have over 300 different workspaces, and they're using footprints to automate virtually everything within the universities there. Now another piece here is that these can work or run completely independent. So customer service center, maybe that should be its own sort of entity off on the side. No one even needs to know that it's there. We can absolutely do that. But more often than not, what we see is there is collaboration necessary between these different groups. And again, by leveraging this workspace architecture, 
a request can initiate somewhere and automatically engage another workspace to automatically execute the next process. When we talk about IT service management, again, most times we're not talking about a single workspace. We're talking about anywhere from one to five. We may have incident and problem management in separate workspaces, then, of course, change management. Each of these now allowing for us to document the right type of information to get the right level of information to the critical business owners out in reports to internal and external auditors, and, of course, to follow these best practices. The second area that we see largest expansion with workspaces is into groups like facilities and HR, because IT facilities and HR are typically working hand-in-hand when it comes to the idea of onboarding and offboarding individuals. And nearly every customer that I speak to today is struggling on how to do this effectively in terms of really communicating the right level of information. So by leveraging the service catalog within Footprints and this core concept of workspaces, a customer can go out to the service catalog and request a new hire, which in turn will create a new onboarding request in the HR. And as that happens through the template process, it can automatically create the series of tasks that we need to do. They need to uh, get a copy of the driver's license and have the I-9 completed, get them their 401k package, whatever it may be. But they also need to notify IT and facilities so these groups can prepare for this person coming on board as well. And again, as the customer goes out and makes the request through the service catalog, all of this is automatically executed with HR not needing to touch anything. And as these requests are automatically generated in the multiple workspaces, each of these different groups, their workflow applies on top. So as the request is created automatically in IT, that then spawns a series of tasks. Set up the domain account, reimage the machine, configure the voicemail, whatever it is that those users need to do. And most importantly, as each group works through their individual pieces of prepping for this new person that's coming on board, that information seamlessly and automatically writes back to the HR requests, which in turn can notify the customer. So we have complete communication and collaboration between the different groups, again, with no cutting and pasting of emails, no status checks that need to be made. It's just a seamless transfer of information. Now, one of the key pieces, too, to keep in mind is as we go through, and I mention words like customize, configure, modify, build, anything like that, keep in mind this is all point and click through the web-based interface. There is absolutely no programming that's required within Footprints. You will not need a DVA to administer reports or the database in itself. And as we start talking, again, about um, this idea of workspaces and modifying your fields and your forms and your choices that are presented here, this is all done through drag and drop visual form designer. So again, it is designed to be uh, a very quick to implement solution, but giving you robust functionality in terms of making sure that the right information is documented for your organization compliance and reporting needs. And again, as I mentioned, we not only have your baseline reports, but we are also going to have more sophisticated business intelligence um, in the form today of the executive dashboard, which allows for us to have at a glance visibility and understanding of where my service desk is. What does my customer satisfaction rate look like? Where am I succeeding? Where am I fa failing? What needs my attention? Now, as I mentioned very quickly, the other half of the Footprints product line is designed to do endpoint management. And this, again, as I said, will do everything from patching your devices to deploying software to simply running inventory scans. And this, though, will allow for you to have a centralized place to house all of this information and have it available to you from within the service management and configuration management sides of the Footprints product line. In addition to doing auto discovery and endpoint management, again, it also includes cradle-to-grave financial management so that we can understand and help to plan and budget accordingly when we may have devices that are reaching the end of their lease or reaching their end of life in terms of disposal. So we can easily plan ahead, run reports, and understand this is the list of machines that next year are going to be end of life. I need to allocate the right funds to make sure that I can properly address that. Similarly, uh, instead of doing the physical devices, we also, of course, have the software, which we need to be tracking from a financial standpoint, understanding where am I in terms of compliance. That is also included with Inventory Manager so that you have full software license reporting capabilities and metering so that when possible we can reharvest devices uh, or applications rather that maybe aren't being leveraged and recoup those funds, stop paying maintenance on applications that aren't being utilized. Now, finally, um, in terms of the device management, it's not just supporting your devices that are on the network. We do have capabilities of supporting your devices remotely. So if you have traveling staff, 
um, remote workers that you're supporting, you do have full control to run scans, understand their software license usage, understand their patch environment to make sure that vulnerabilities are plugged, security patches are being applied, even launching 256-bit encrypted remote control sessions so that we can quickly and effectively resolve a customer's issue that they're experiencing, whether they're physically in the office with us or not. And lastly, of course, one of the key areas that we're going to talk to is this idea of convergence. So having IT service and asset management together underneath one umbrella, if you will. And this allows for you, again, to have that visibility to understand what device am I focusing on? What devices are my problem devices? Having process level integration where I can go ahead and launch that remote session directly for the, from the configuration item. We can take your configuration management database which typically consists of reporting information, and we can make that CMDB actionable. You can deploy software from a CI. You can run a scan from a CI. You can launch a remote session, as well as from within the service management tickets and change requests as well. Now taking this to the uh, tightest of levels is that we also do automated process level integration. And this best goes, uh, or sort of demonstrates through example here. So we can have a request come in, again, through the service catalog where someone asks for an application. That then creates a request which may or may not need to go through some form of authorization. So once the approval is granted, and again, maybe the approver is dynamically selected based on who the manager of the requester is in Active Directory, we can absolutely accomplish that. They can cast their approval via email. They don't even need to log into the system. <clears throat> and once that happens, we can go ahead and automatically deploy the software and close the ticket with IT never, ever touching that request. So in less than 15 minutes, the request came in, the approval can be granted, the software is installed, the customer has gotten their customer satisfaction survey from Footprints, and you now have 100% success rate from your customer. They're, they have been completely serviced where Level 2 never needed to be pulled off their project that they are currently working on. Think about the resources that you can free up by leveraging this level of automation here. And of course, as the subsequent scan runs, it updates and applies that this device now has the software and tags it to the right software there. Okay, so let's go ahead here and have a look at Footprints. And we're going to start out logging in as a customer. Logo, of course, can be changed to match your environment. Footprints is 100% web-based. Not sure I mentioned that um, as part of our dialogue. So everyone is going to access via a browser. That also includes where all administration of the solution will be done. We of course integrate with your Active Directory for authentication or any other LDAP compliant data source. And once, um, <clears throat> or if you'd rather, you can also set up web server authentication, which will allow for pass through authentication to take place. No one ever needs to enter in credentials. Immediately upon logging in, the first thing the customer sees is a list of our global incidents. These are those major or important issues that we're currently working through. And uh, these are the equivalent to the whiteboards within the SDE solution or uh, broadcasts in the Remedy products. So once uh, they see these, obviously if our issue here as Sally the customer is also related to my inability to access SAP for example, I can click these subscribe buttons and I'll automatically be appended to these requests. As we can see here, she's already done that. Now what this means to IT though is you're only going to work within Global Incident 3175. And any updates or modifications that you make will automatically be filtered down to all of those associated or globally linked tickets. So this, of course, gives you a central place to manage a large number of calls that are coming in, all due to one core problem. Now, uh, we, of course, do a fully integrated knowledge management. And as a best practice, I have my customers coming into our knowledge base articles ranked by popularity. But if you'd rather them come directly into the service catalog or blank form, you can certainly do that. Again, whatever will best reflect uh, the needs of your customer base. We do have self-maintaining FAQs to help guide our customers through this knowledge search and get them to manageable listings prior to having to enter in even any search criteria. And if we click on the hyperlink here, we'll see that uh, within the articles we do of course have a rich text editor. So you can embed images, embed hyperlinks out to external sources, whatever you need to do to guide your customer through that self-help here. 